Hey there, welcome back. I'm Jason. Today, believe it or not, I want to talk to you about salt. Yes, the old regular salt that you sprinkle on your food at dinner time. How is it made? What is it made of? And why does it make food taste so darn good? Also, what's its cultural significance? Because believe it or not, salt has been involved in human culture for millennia. So let's sprinkle a little science into our conversation and explore why we even need salt at all, what it's made of, and why does it make food taste so darn good? First things first, let's break down what salt actually is from a chemistry standpoint. Now in everyday terms, when we say salt, we're usually referring to table salt, which is primarily composed of sodium chloride, one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. And this is abbreviated as NaCl. Now what's crazy about this is that the chlorine comes from the right-hand side of the periodic table. Chlorine is a gas that will kill you almost immediately. Now, sodium is from the left-hand side, the metal side of the periodic table, and sodium is a metal that is so reactive that if you drop it into water, it produces hydrogen gas and actually catches on fire. So sodium, you certainly couldn't eat it. Chlorine, you absolutely could not eat it. But somehow, when you put these together and make sodium chloride crystals, not only can we eat it, but we absolutely need it for our body to function. It makes food taste better, and our body requires dissolved sodium chloride in our tissues in order to function. Did you know that salt actually comes in various forms and compositions? So let's get into the nitty gritty of salt formation. One of the most common sources of salt is seawater, which contains about 3.5% dissolved salts. Among these salts, sodium chloride reigns supreme. When seawater evaporates, either naturally or through some sort of industrial process, it leaves behind salt deposits. Over time, these deposits can leave vast beds of salt behind, and even underground salt domes. Now, as we mentioned before, at the molecular level, salt is made up of sodium ions, which are positively charged, and chlorine ions from the right side of the periodic table, which are negatively charged. These ions are held together by ionic bonds, which are formed from the transfer of electrons between sodium and chlorine atoms. This results in the formation of a crystal lattice structure, giving salt its characteristic cubic shape. So what's basically happening is when you bring an atom of sodium in proximity to an atom of chlorine, the atom of sodium really wants to donate an electron, and the atom of chlorine really wants to grab and hold on to an electron, so you have a perfect pair. The sodium donates an electron, the chlorine accepts the electron, and then these become charged ions. So when you have a positively charged sodium ion and a negatively charged chlorine ion, they're violently attracted to each other. And so they form this nice crystal lattice because the sodium and the chlorine ions are attracted together. That's called an ionic bond. All right, now that we've covered the chemistry of salt, let's sprinkle in some history and some culture. Now, believe it or not, salt has played a pivotal role throughout history, not only as a food seasoning, but also as a preservative, even as a form of currency in many cases. For instance, did you know that some of the earliest evidence of salt processing dates back to about 6,000 BC? That's right, people living in present-day Romania were boiling spring water just to extract the salt. And it wasn't just Romania. Salt was prized by many ancient civilizations across the globe, from the Egyptians to the Greeks and to the Romans. Salt's importance in human civilization goes beyond just culinary uses. It's been involved in religious ceremonies, trade routes, and even wars. In fact, Entire wars have been fought over salt, and it's played a significant role in historical events like the American Revolution and even the French Revolution. Now, let's circle back to the kitchen because let's face it, salt makes everything taste better. But why? Why does sprinkling a little salt on a piece of food make it actually taste better? Well, it all comes down to the way salt interacts with our taste buds. You see, when we consume salty foods, the sodium ions in salt trigger specific taste receptors on our taste buds, signaling our brain that we're experiencing the taste of saltiness. 
The sensation enhances the flavors of other foods by suppressing bitterness and enhancing sweetness. So it's sort of like salt is acting as a flavor amplifier, making everything more delicious. So if you're ever cooking and you're not quite sure exactly why it's not popping and it's not tasting great, probably you're just missing a little bit of salt to make everything else sing in the dish. But as much as we love salt, it's essential to remember that moderation is key. Actually, too much salt consumption has been linked to various health issues, including hypertension and cardiovascular disease. That's why health organizations recommend limiting our daily intake of salt and opting for healthier alternatives whenever possible. All right, folks, that wraps up today's talk. We've explored the chemistry of salt, its rich history, its impact on our taste buds and our health, and we've explored why sprinkling a little bit of salt actually makes most dishes taste better in ways other than just its saltiness. I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me today. Drop me a line, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.